There's no hiding from your grace I can't deny your half of mine And it's unreal and chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over Everybody, my name is Haley, and I don't know about you, but I am so ready for this season. What's your favorite thing to do over the summer? Is it going to the beach? Sand castles and ocean waves. Radical, dude. Or maybe you prefer water skiing on the lake. How about some white water rafting? Woo! Woo! Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, make it. Oh, it's fun. Let's do it again. Yeah! many water-related activities to choose from, which is a good thing because all summer long, we're going to be learning how to make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. When you make waves, that means you make an impact. See the boat in the water? It's not really moving, is it? But watch what happens when I make a wave. You see that impact? We can make waves too. But our waves aren't made with water. Our waves are made by showing things like joy, patience, or peace. And 
In today's story, we'll learn a good reason why we should make a big wave of love that will impact the world around us. Here comes a big one! Woo! Ready, cool dude! I'll see you soon. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. In the beginning, there was... Nothing. Nothing but God. But God's heart was overflowing with love. So God poured it out in a mind-blowing wave of creation. Glorious light, rolling waters, arching sky, furling plants, swooping birds, creeping and racing and climbing animals. <laughs> then God reached into the dirt and shaped something brand new, a person. God formed the very first man and breathed life into him. Oh, hello. I feel like I need a something, a name. That's it. God shaped the very first woman too. You can call me Eve. I'm Adam. People were created in God's very own image to reflect God's love to the whole world. But God also created people free to make their own choices. Adam and Eve chose to break the one law God made to keep them safe. They shattered their perfect friendship with God. Sin and brokenness entered the world. Family members turned against each other. It's not fair. Leave me alone. Fear and anger and pain crept in. But God didn't walk away. God's love was bigger than anything else. He already had a plan to bring people back into relationship, to make things right again. And he started by calling one person, Abraham. Abram. Yes, Lord? Go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Yes, Lord. Though Abraham and his wife Sarah were very old, they had no children, but they followed God for 20 years into the unknown, and at last God gave them a miraculous child, Isaac. God has given laughter to me. Through that one child, Isaac, God's love spread out like a wave, forming an entire nation, the tribes of Israel. The Israelites blew hot and cold. Sometimes they would follow God with all their hearts and oftentimes they would forget. Still filled with deep love, God sent them leaders like Moses. God says, let my people go. And David. The Lord is my shepherd. He gives me everything I need. God made waves through women like Esther and Ruth. Where you go, I'll go. Over and over, God's people promised to obey. And over and over, they turned away. At last, God allowed them to be taken into captivity. But even here, God never left them. God sent prophets to speak words of truth, prophets who hinted at a rescuer who would come to save God's people once and for all so they'd never have to be apart from God again. Malachi wrote, Bethlehem Ephrathah, out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Zechariah proclaimed, City of Zion, be full of joy. See, your king comes to you. He always does what is right. He has won the victory. Isaiah promised, The people who are now living in darkness will see a great light. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. His rule will be based on what is fair and right. It will last forever. The Lord's great love will make sure that happens. But following the prophets for hundreds of years, no word from God was recorded. It seemed as if God's love was silent. But the real wave was coming. At exactly the right moment in time, God sent Jesus. God's very own son was born as a baby to an ordinary girl in an ordinary town. Angels declared the news. 
May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Jesus gave the world a picture of what God looks like. He showed what it truly means to love God and to love others. And then he gave up his own life for the sake of his friends, his enemies, for us. Jesus took all our brokenness on himself, and he died. But God's love can never be stopped. God created the greatest wave of all when he raised Jesus back to life. In Jesus, every wrong thing is made right. Every broken piece is made whole. God's love through Jesus comes out in a wave that's not just for a single group of people or any one specific time. God's love floods the earth for all people for all time. John, one of Jesus' closest followers, wrote about it like this. Here's how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. He sent him so we could receive life through him. Here's what love is. It's not that we loved God. It is that he loved us and sent his son to give his life to pay for our sins. Oh, dear friends, since God loved us this much, we should also love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. His love is made complete in us. Here's how we know that we are joined to him and he to us. He has given us his Holy Spirit. God's love is flowing all around us right now. And through the power of God's Spirit, we too can spread that bottomless love to the world around us. So here's the good news. God loves you. God loved you enough to send Jesus to the world. And you don't have to do anything to earn that love. In fact, Jesus showed how great his love was by giving his life for your sins. And when you believe in Jesus, not only do you have a relationship with God that lasts forever, but God gives you the Holy Spirit to help you through life. If God loves you that much, you can make waves by showing love to others. Think of it this way. This is God. God pours his love into you. Then you can take that love and pour it into other people. John wrote, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us. Maybe that means that other people can see God through us when we show them love. But love doesn't have to be a tidal wave. Something that seems small can have a huge impact. You can love someone by helping them without being asked. You can love someone by giving up your turn. Sometimes all you have to do to show love is just spend time with someone. When you choose to love people the way God loves you, you can make waves. And you may not see it, but you can bet that love will spread from you to other people to even more people. So here's the one thing to remember today. Love others because God loves you. You could change the world one person at a time. <sighs> Why am I so thirsty right now? <laughs>